David, you're not feeling well. No, I'm a little down. I'm a little down. I was I ran I was running a fever over most of the weekend and coughing and you know congestion and stuff like that. And uh, so I've been home from work for the most part. I've been working from home, yeah. but uh, I did take off like half Friday because I was just so I was so sick. I just like couldn't even I couldn't even sit in a chair. I was so sick. So yeah. I just went. I was like I was like I'm gonna wait until uh, my coworker comes in and then I'm just gonna sign off. Is that okay? And everybody was like, Yeah, that's fine. Because you know, luckily well, we have the people right now. You know, if your head's a little fuzzy, this is the So Many Sequels podcast. Yes, you are on it with us and, and Andrew. Us Andrew today. is back hey, Andrew. In for our end of the year spectacular. So our last couple of episodes before 2023. How exciting, Andrew! What you been up? What you been Not keeping busy with? No, a lot. Busy with? No, uh, Not a lot. Not a lot, really. I just uh, yesterday I went to a wedding, and that's about it. That's good. Were you in the wedding, or was this like photography gig wedding? Neither. I was just I was there as a spectator. Oh, you were there for your friend. Well, that's nice. nice. That's very nice. It's that's nice. Like, every time I hear you go to a wedding, it's always work related. Yeah, so it's nice that you it can just go and celebrate somebody and not have to work. That's good. Yeah, and the food was really good. So there you that's go. good. We love good food at a wedding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. What are you all been up to? Well, you know. Oh. Same old, same. Getting ready for Christmas. So yeah, many Santas has been at full blast. Mm-hmm. You, we've talked about Ernest Saves Christmas. We've talked about Home Alone 2. And we've talked about Spirited. Yes. You've seen all those, right, Andrew? Or have you seen Spirited yet? No, I haven't. Well, you should watch it and then go listen to a review. I recommend. Okay. Yeah. Have you seen Ernest Saves Christmas? It has been a very long time. Okay. Okay. Have you seen what was the other one we did? Home Alone Two. Oh, Home Alone Two. Seen Home Two. Have you seen Home Alone Two? Which lost in that? New York. Is Always in lost Donald in New York. Trump? Yeah. 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 Is Donald Trump yeah. in that one? Yes. Well. Okay. Someone's in it. <laughs> Please. Digital trading card entrepreneur Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? That's a fair. That is a fair shot. Okay, they are. Oh, Timely. Some of your stockings right now. <laughs> they dated the heck out of this podcast. <laughs> you, know, you know, they sold out, I heard. I don't know how you sell out of yeah. digital. But... They sold out with the copyright. That, that with the... They're exclusive. Could they have, have been a million. With, Could have been with, 10 of them. I don't know. With some of the watermarks on them, I hear. Well, we're in the lead up to Christmas, literally, quite frankly. I don't remember when this is going to drop. But it's very soon that Christmas is here. We, it might be a little bit of a... I think it drops oh, no. on the 19th. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. So this is the week before Christmas. Yes. I hope your Christmas shopping is done. Are y'all done? Nope. Andrew's uh, not done. Very close David's to done. almost done. Garrett, are you done? I've been rapping, man. Call me Eminem. I think I'm done with everything I need to go to the store to buy. I think I might order a couple more things online, but it's been... Yeah, I've got, I got two more people to shop for, and that's it. Okay. Yeah, that's I remember great. if I talked about this last time, but I've tried to go... Fi- I think I did. Where I try to go, I try to buy things physically if I can. There's nothing more frustrating than being in the store and having to order it from their online store. You're That's like, I'm true. Here. I'm here. Why isn't this item here? I tried to support you. Anyway. Yeah, it's just the longer you wait, you know, the harder it is to go to the store. There's so many yeah. people. And then you're going to end up in a jingle all the way where you're fighting with the Turbo Man doll. And the internet just makes it Turbo Man doll. Yeah. Which go- you can hear our review of that at SoManySequels.com yes. as well from a previous So Many Santas. Yes. But outside of shopping, have y'all any other Christmas movies y'all been watching just on the side? Anything you wanted to chat about? I don't have any. I don't think. I watched A Miracle on 34th Street, the, uh, mm. I want to say, 95 classic. version. With, oh, not the classic. Yeah. Oh, what was the name of the girl that made, played Matilda? Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I, I know who you're talking about. Ma- yeah. Mar- Ma- Mara Wilson? Mara yeah, Wilson. That's, that's it. it. That's it. Mara it. Wilson and David Attenborough. I think that's his name. Or Richard yeah. Attenborough. Richard Which Attenborough. one was... Yeah, Richard Attenborough. They were, uh, he's Santa. And it's a good movie. It's a fun movie. It's a, you know, it's a, I haven't seen the old one to like really compare and contrast, but you know, yeah. I watched that this morning. It was fun. The old one, I actually have that here. It's very, I love that movie. Like that, I mean, this is like regular Christmas rotation over here in the Nichols household. Right. But, <laughs> but the thing is, when it comes to Christmas movies, I watched Scrooge yesterday. I watched mm-hmm. Bad Santa this morning. And yeah. I watched watched one more. Oh yeah, I watched Elf. So I've been trying to make a regular rotation of Christmas films. That's pretty good. That sounds That's like a good. 
I yeah, I was watching banger after banger as well because I had nightmare before Christmas. I watch, I watch. I went on the I watch Klaus, which is a regular rotation Christmas movie for me these days. And you can check our review of that. You can. And then the night before, which is the epic oh. get hyped Christmas movie. You just get higher and higher and take it to the sky. Every year I add, yeah. You can Every year I add a star. I think it's a 10 star movie for me at this point. Yeah. I will uh, say. I wait, I wait for it to not be funny. And I know you guys don't like it, but I wait for it to not be funny for me because, you know, any of those movies that are made in that time frame, those stoner esque type movies, if you're fans of them, they can easily fall on a rewatch. And so I go in thinking, is this going to be the time? And every time I laugh. That says more I about you and your deranged self than it says about really. <laughs> I love a thing. bad Christmas movie. Yes, We're give me raunchy today. Christmas. Oh, I gotta say, so last week we talked, yeah, three of us, Andrew, you weren't here for it, but we talked about Home Alone 2. Yeah. And I put myself through something for a science experiment. Oh, yeah. I, I watched Home Sweet Home Alone. Yeah. The 2021 Disney Plus reboot or so of the series. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'm sorry. New installment. <laughs> I did this, like I said, for science. I had to know, how does Home Alone work in the age of the internet? How does any of this happen? So let me give you a brief highlight list of how terrible this movie is. It's, let me start by saying it's irredeemable. It is half oh, a star no. at best. Oh, it is no. completely among the worst things I've ever watched. Irredeemable. So and because of that, <laughs> because of that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spoil the movie. So oh, okay. I don't That's care. I, don't I, I assume he is no longer Home Alone at the end. Correct. Yeah. So, home, home Sweet Home Alone. We've got the little boy from Jojo Rabbit. If anyone mm. remembers that, I forget his mm. name, Ar Artie or Arlo or something. Good kid. He's fine. He's, you know, he's a good actor. But he, is, he and his mom have moved to Chicago just recently. They are British for reasons. And they are getting ready to go on a trip overseas. What a surprise. Where it starts out on the wrong foot immediately is right. when you watch the original Home Alones, you, the perception you are given is that the family is kind of mean to Kevin, right? Yeah, then they're he's, neglectful of Kevin. They're neglectful of Kevin. He's yeah. kind of a little shit sometimes, but he's also, what, 10 years old? That's expected. But they're kind of mean to him. The reverse is true this time. The family seems perfectly reasonable, and the kid is a shit. Oh. He is very rarely, oh, I'm on your side. He's just, he just doesn't like his family for any reason. His whole thing is, I just don't want them here because I just don't. Not because they're mean to him, because they're, they're loud. style. Yeah. Right. So the way he gets left alone is he sneaks into his mom's car in the garage, which is very clearly a BMW. They want you to know that. <laughs> and he make watches, that money in. He watches cartoons on the backseat television and falls asleep in the garage. And Wakes you can up, have all, that. You can have that. Wakes you can up, have that with a new BMW. Is that, they're all gone. Unfortunately, it takes a very long time before we ever even go back to the parents to figure out how he's not been found. Yeah. Put a pin in that. The bad guys, the Marvin Harry of this movie is Kimmy Schmidt, <laughs> Ellie Kemper, Ellie and Kemper. Rob Delaney. Okay. Now, again, in the previous original movies, Marvin Harry are criminals. It's very clear. In this one, Rob and Ellie are a struggling couple who are about to lose their home because they can't afford their mortgage anymore. So you immediately are very sympathetic of them. A little bit, yeah. Here's the quick setup. If they worked harder, they wouldn't be in this position. Little Kevin, I don't remember his name, but he's, I'm gonna call him Kevin. Little Kevin has to go to the bathroom for some reason while they're driving down the street. The mom decides, let's pull over at this open house and let you pee in the bathroom there. Because why, who, why wouldn't we do that? Right. It is there. It is Ellie and Rob's house because they're putting it on the market because they can't afford it anymore. Kevin goes in there, immediately starts bullying Rob Delaney for no reason. He, the first words he says to him is he goes, you look like Frankenstein. Just starts insulting this man. And right. then he pulls out a box of old dolls from the attic. One of them had... It's creepy. One of them is a doll that has its head upside down. Yada, yada, yada. It's worth $200,000. Oh. 
Kevin steals it from them. What are they? Hey. How are they? So when they find out it's been taken by the kid, they go, we got to break into his house and take our toy back. It's ours. Uh, and we're going to sell it so we can keep our home. Did they not know they had it? They didn't know it was worth anything. It was like uh -huh. a box of his mom's old stuff. They didn't know it was priceless. So that's what happens. They break in. So the whole time you're like, these people are just trying to take back what was theirs in the first place. They're right, rightfully theirs. This kid should just give it to him. He stole it from their house. The one good joke in the movie is Rob Delaney goes to Ellie Kemper. Is it really a crime if we're just stealing back what was already ours? And she goes, that's what OJ got in trouble for the second time. <laughs> Which is a wild Disney that's Plus it. joke to me. That's pretty true. So then just stupid hijinks happen and the movie ends, I swear to God, with them all becoming friends. It's a Christmas miracle. Sometimes the spirit of the season means you make new friendships yeah, that you after, never expected. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any how sense. Do get, how after do they get Kev by? After Kevin nearly kills them with his booby traps, they finally are like, it's a misunderstanding. We just need to talk. You took our toy and we just want it back. Here's the twist. He didn't take the toy. But it, you were led to think he did. Yep, he didn't take it. It was just lost. They found it, though. So I, then yeah, El, Ellie Kemp is like, oh, my God, little boy, we'll take care of you until your mom gets back. And they're just and they do. And then the mom gets back from Paris or whatever. And now they have friends in the neighborhood. I hated it. It was so horrible. I mean, there is there. So there's I don't it can't you can't win really, can you? No, because it was a, if it was like a shy, if it was beat, beat for beat from alone, you'd be like, this is just a boring retread. But this is so not as good. This no, isn't like, even a retread, I think, is better than like, is what essentially is a waste of time. Okay. So I just yes. had to get that out there. Oh, oh, and the reason that she can't just call Kevin is because he is 10 years old and he doesn't have a cell phone and they don't have a landline because it's 2021. I can actually buy that. Now. Yeah, that's the most believable thing. Here's my, this is the last thing I'm going to say on the movie and then we'll move on to our real one because this is the kicker, the big kicker. She can't call Kevin. So mom calls the police to do a welfare check on him. I left my kid home alone. Can you go check on him? They radio it in. Ah, we got a birth, uh, lost kid home alone on Christmas. Da, 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 da. And we cut to a cop who says, ah, uh, that's just a prank call. My brother Kevin does it every year. And it's Buzz McAllister's. Oh. It's, it's. I mean, I mean, I, I am. is a cop. And you I'm said sure was, I would laugh pretty hard at that part, at the very least. And you said it was irredeemable. <laughs> I mean it. It's so that's oh, the please. reason why the cops don't help, is he just brushes it off as Kevin calling in a prank call. Beautiful. He goes, when we were kids, we left my brother home alone for Christmas two years in a row, and he does this every year. It does sound so, like something Kevin would start doing after he turned does. 18, is just start calling in prank calls. So basically, he's cheap Wiggum. Sure. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. That sounds right. Okay. That's my mini episode on Home Sweet Home Alone. Before we get started on our movie Bad Santa, I was going to go make some sandwiches if anybody wants a sandwich. Oh. Does anybody want it? Let me make it. Oh, I, I, like I, a sandwich. I, I get the reference now. Okay. Andrew, you chose Bad Santa for us. Yes. So what we've been doing is having each person explain why. So mm -hmm. why did you choose Bad Santa for us this week? Yeah. So Bad Santa is one of those movies that right around Christmas time is somehow referenced. And and for some reason, like, I have never seen it. The first time I ever mm -hmm. tried to watch it, I actually turned it off five minutes into it. I was just like, this looks horrible. This looks, I don't want to watch this. I took it back to Hastings and I never read it or saw it again. And that's an old sentence. I want to, I wanted to watch it mainly because I'm like, number one, I'm a lot older. Mm -hmm. Number two, I wanted to get, I wanted to like give it another try because <laughs> the one person I really like out of all of this entire movie is Bernie Mac. Bernie yeah. Mac is like, he's like, like barely in it. Yeah. But Bernie <laughs> Mac steals the show anytime he's in it. Mm -hmm. Like, the he's funny, but he didn't still I can support that. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was in it. Though. I mean, but anyway, well, there were parts of it that were, I mean, 
I'll get to that in just a second. But that's mainly why I wanted to choose this movie. It was like, let's give this a try. Lots of people talk about it. And and including two of the two of the people here. Oh, did he freeze? Oh, I think I think he dead. froze. I think he, I think Santa gave him a lump of coal right there. <laughs> he froze right happened. at the very moment. He uh, did. Look at that face, though. He's about to say <laughs> something good too. <laughs> well, that's okay. Andrew, Andrew will work on coming back, and we'll just yeah, he'll we'll just keep. He gave us a good answer. He should snap I back in here in a second. I assume you're the other person he meant. I would imagine so. Okay, then you have to go next. Yeah, I, I listen. I like this movie. I think that it's funny. It's not. Listen, for me, it is another raunchy Christmas movie. And I just like those because they get, you get something different. You don't have to have everything that is magical and wonderful all of the time. And this is the Christmas told from the Grinch's perspective, right? Billy Bob Thornton, if you look at it from that perspective, is the Grinch and Christmas is surrounding him. And he is unhappy. He is grumpy. And that's what I imagine the Grinch would do in this situation, right? And then there's always that moment where the Grinch comes back around and has some kind of moment where his heart grows three sizes too big or something like that, right? And they always have that, and I just enjoy that as a different kind of storytelling part for a Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, this movie is ridiculous. The Billy Bob Thornton is just evil. I mean, he's the bad Santa. He's a bad Santa. The fact that anybody hires him is ridiculous. Just by looking at him, he doesn't appear to be a proper working Santa, right? Even right. if he has a partner in crime, literally and figuratively, that helps sell a little bit of the shtick that they're right. doing with the Santa and the Elf and Tony Cox playing the Elf. Um, you know, it's still, I, if I was the manager, I'd be like, no, no I mean, he no. He did not go to Santa camp, is what you're saying. He did not go to Santa camp. He was not a certified Santa. Yeah. But the way that that's, he reacts. That, that's bad Santa 3 is he goes to Santa camp and has to meet all of the, and I would all the diverse that. hires. This, the reason that I genuinely have always appreciated this movie is because it is John Ritter's last. And for me, that was why I wanted to watch it. At the, just love John Ritter. And when he died, I was really upset. And so when this movie came out, I really wanted to just support it by watching it for you know, his arm. And then again, Bernie Mac, I do think he's very funny. I think that the dynamic that they set up is pretty funny. I mean, again, it's not your traditional gonna give you good feelings, but it is funny. <laughs> the way that he interacts with Thurman Merman throughout the whole thing is a lot of it's questionable, right? And it's not, it can be uncomfortable to watch and know a little bit more about how kids are and, and how they act. But I just, I don't know. It's funny. Okay. okay. I really wish Andrew was back. Is he know, trying to get I back know. in? I don't know. I told him to rejoin, so, but he we'll see. That, I was going to say to him, and I will if he comes back, it's Thurman Merman who steals the show to me. It's not Bertie Mac. Thurman Merman, he's an icon. I don't have a relationship with this movie. I am only like 50-50 on even if I'd seen it before or if I had just seen a bunch of clips on TNT or something, you know? So this was the first time that I can remember really, let's focus and watch it. And it's... I went through a... Not like a roller coaster in terms of intensity, but I went through waves of this movie is not good, and then uh, I like it again, and uh, I don't like it anymore. Uh, I like it again. It did that a lot. I think Billy Bob Thornton, his relationship with, I believe Mer Thurman Merman's real name is Brett Kelly, is really strong. I think I like the chemistry that they have, and that kind of saves it in the parts where. It started to dip for me a little bit. It's, I think I'd have to go back because I don't remember my rules as well as David remembers his militant ones. I think it qualifies as a Christmas movie in my rules because it has the whole like, it really drives it home with the family aspect that ties together mm -hmm. at the end, right? He, Billy Bob does decide to take care of or help Thurman. And Lauren Graham's character is appointed his guardian, so he gets to have a happy ending. And that helps it maintain its Christmas appeal to me. So, fine. That's the best yeah. I can say. Yes. I really wish Andrew had been here, because I, I prepared something that I was going to say, uh, just for Andrew. And uh, I'll say it anyway, and we'll just Photoshop that screenshot of Andrew into the shot. Um, been a while since Andrew's been on the show. 
and good to have him back if he comes back. He's a good friend. We've been good friends for a long time. And it's in that spirit and the holiday season. I'm going to forgive him for having me endure this 90 minutes of non-combat. This was so hard. Like, it was brutal. It was brutal. I didn't like it. But um, I would say that it is a Christmas movie in the sense that it's kind of an anti-Christmas movie. Like, the whole point of it is to I can see that argument. grudge on, you know, the cheeriness of Christmas and how not everybody has a happy life. But this is R-rated Ernest. This is a guy who's so stupid, like, he couldn't live. You know how you talked to me the other week about how Ernest was too dumb to live? Yeah. Ernest at least had a house and a car and a job. This guy has <laughs> a being, and he's too drunk to get his life. It's, it is such an early 2000s comedy, where, or R-rated comedy, where it's just a lot of shock value. There he is. Yeah, there a lot of shock is. value. Back, yeah, I agree. You. This is a comedy that can only live in a certain time period. For the record, John, it sounds like I love this movie. This is not a movie I love. This is it's, a movie that makes me laugh. It's going to be a sliding scale, I think. It's going to be a sliding scale. Andrew, you're back. And I want to tell you that in honor of the holiday season, I have forgiven you for making me watch this movie. Da Thank David you. didn't find it funny. <laughs> Very good. No, I didn't find it funny for the most part. Now, I will say that I agree with Andrew. I do think that John Ritter and, and Garrett John Ritter, that John Ritter and Bernie Mac, I actually thought their scenes were the funniest for me, just because they yes. were so opposite, because, you know, John Ritter's playing this sort of, like, kind of uptight conservative guy who's trying to be very progressive and trying to do the right thing, but does not know all the things, which is a very early 2000s archetype. And then Bernie Mac is just very matter-of-fact and doesn't say a lot and just gives these steely stares and you can't tell where he's coming from. And so I really enjoyed every scene that had John Ritter and Bernie Mac in them. This is a total disservice to Lauren Graham. I'm not a huge Lauren Graham fan necessarily. I don't follow all her stuff. But she's a good actress. And to be kind of reduced to just being a Santa fetish girl with no real, I mean, no real dialogue other than, uh, well, I can't say it. <laughs> But uh, it is, <laughs> I feel like it's a huge disservice to her. She's better than that. And I have to ask, if you had, if anybody had a Santa fetish, I think seeing Billy Bob Thornton in the state that he was in, in that moment, we go, this is challenging even for this. That's not my listen, kind of Santa. Listen, I don't looks, disagree with you, but haggard. those people exist. That is a thing that does exist in a part of the world. There is that person. Look, and but he looks so haggard, man. Position. Why? I would be like, oh, can I borrow your Santa suit for this handsome guy over here? Yeah. They will probably be do it. <laughs> and there is no shaming at so many sequels. I'll just say that. No. Yeah. If you got a Santa fetish, it's cool. Check the hat. But <laughs> I think that if you, Lauren Graham just comes across looking, it's another one of those things where they just like give an incredibly gorgeous girl to a guy who looks like a total slob and she has no real character outside of, I like to have sex with Santa Claus. And so it's, I don't know, it's, I think it's a disservice to her. I think Tony Cox, I don't like to be disrespectful of actors, but I think because Cox was one of the worst performances I've seen as Marcus. He <laughs> just feels like they gave him his line right before shooting. They went, here's the line. He looked at it and went, okay, you're in trouble. And that was the whole, like, that was the most you were going to get out of him. Billy Bob Thornton's fine because Billy Bob Thornton seems like he could sleep through a role and uh, pretty good. <laughs> but yeah, did generally did not find it very funny. And uh, it just kind of reminded me, like, I saw this when I was 15 and I didn't really like it then. So I'm, I'm at least glad to see that I haven't changed it. This seems like a movie that was created just to be on Comedy Central. <laughs> hey, a lot of those movies were that way, you know, I, I feel like... This is a better version, but like Big Daddy, you know, that that type of Adam Sandler movie, that also seems like a movie that was specifically built for that early 2000s, late 1990s, a comedy central. You know, you you have that moment mm -hmm. even whenever you like fade out into the commercial because you know that's how they're going to edit it whenever you put it in syndication. Yeah, there's you know, so many fade outs in this movie. In this movie there's so many two. fade outs. Yeah, there were so many fade outs where you could easily tell that's where advertising goes, that's where advertising goes, that's where advertising goes. Like TV notification right there because that's and, what the point. And scripted over it, yeah. FX. It it does almost seem like, you know, I don't know what was what was going on in the early 2000s to uh, cause this, but, and I'm the furthest thing from being prudish about my movies, but there, raunchy movies were a big thing in yeah, the early yeah. 2000s, and it almost felt like they were like, well, we need a Christmas one, so let's make a Christmas raunch. 
I know. And, but for me, I feel like one of the main jokes was, well, the premise is, what if Santa was a bad person? What if right. Amal Santa was a bad person? Which is fine as a premise. But honestly, the, the image of drunken Santa does not improve in humor over the course <laughs> of the movie. Like, it's, it peaks the first time you see drunken Santa. That's kind of as good as it gets. So I, I don't know. Like, I felt like they just went back to the same joke over and over again, which is Billy Bob Thornton's drunk. He curses at a child. Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton's drunk. He curses at a mom. You know, like it's just like the same thing over and over. You're again. not wrong. Yeah. yeah, it is driven by the performance and the over the topness anger from Billy Bob. I mean, that is it is definitely not a movie of script or plot. It is a movie of Billy Bob. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna yell at a child and you're gonna make it funny. And it was like, okay, right. <laughs> Whatever well, you want to pay me, then it's fine. it was almost like. At the time, the shock value was funny to people, right? Seeing someone scream and curse at a child in a comedic way was like, oh, I'm not supposed to laugh at this, so I like it, is what it, I think right. was the I, gist, I, right? I, I may not have the timeline right, but there was, you know, there was a, I think, I mean, I'm, people will correct me. I'm probably losing fans for this particular review anyway, but. People will correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a heavy put PC, polit you know, political correctness movement in the early 90s that was mostly conservative based. Sure. And it was like they don't want this or that or sex or drugs or rock and roll or anything like that. And then in the late 90s, you really and late to mid 2000s, you saw a, you know, the response to that was shock value, was raunch and was right. debauchery and, and things like that. Right. So, yeah, it's well, not it, unique it, in that sense, you know. No, I'm not going to say that. Never mind. Andrew, you got cut out. With, uh, let's finish up your review. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we, sorry, Zan. Before you got to the internet bug bit. And don't I worry about it. Know. Just lean back into what you were saying. Don't worry. You, you, yeah, you were saying two of them like this movie. I, yeah, you were about to call me out. <laughs> well, I mean, like, it was just, uh, like, the fact that this is, like, Coen Brothers executive produced. Mm. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I learned that. that this said, I didn't know that. I, I've watched said this it. movie so many times. I've never known that. It said it right yeah. at the beginning. I forgot about that. And I went, what? Yeah. I, I didn't was even like, catch it. I was like, maybe it's, it's better than I remember. And then it wasn't. It's It's got Coen Brothers blood in it. So, you know, I feel like the, I feel like the sandwiches bit is, is from them. You know, that so, does sound like them. Yeah. That's a good and, point. But, but the other thing is that, did I like this movie? No. <laughs> is it a Christmas movie or is it Christmas themed? Which yeah. one is it, Andrew? Where do you lie on a bad Santa? Yeah. It is, it is themed, my boy. Oh, it is Christmas themed. There you go. That's definitely true. Yeah, most movies are Christmas themed. I want to, you know, we've talked, we've already said, we've all talked about how there's no, the plot isn't really what matters in this movie. But I do want to talk about how bizarre the ending is, which is told oh, in an epilogue via narration from Billy Bob from right. the hospital. Now, listen, he died. He got shot up. Oh, he got I couldn't even, in the back like eight times, yeah. I couldn't reconcile that he lived that through that. Yeah. Why it did we do like, that? Honestly, it definitely seemed like they showed this to somebody and it had an ending and they showed it to him. Everybody in the audience went, oh no, we'll, and like the focus audience said, oh, he needs to live. There has to be another yeah. one of these, right? And they were like, let's green light Bad Santa 2 right away. He's going to live. We're going to re re just record an epilogue. You Spoiler know? alert. They did not green light it right away. Oh yeah. Well, that's true. It I, took till 2016 to make the second one. It did take a long time. I wonder if it, I wonder when they said they were going to, they wanted to do it though. So uh, yeah, he is shot by the police. The police are basically embarrassed by almost killing an unarmed man dressed as Santa. So right. he wor he starts working for them. As a sensitivity counselor. As a sensitivity counselor, as you do with criminals. And Lauren Graham, this stranger, is just appointed custody of Thurman. Thurman Murphy. Until his dad is released from prison. As if that is a good scenario. Don't put the dad back with Thurman. Let I Lauren mean, Graham keep him, if anything. So can <laughs> this family that Thurman is a part of is so effed up because yeah. Thurman appears to be emotionally traumatized oh, in yeah. some way or another. You know, they keep calling him the R word. He may be didn't love that. He, he may no, be that is not over. Uh, that's very shock value. Early two thousand, yeah. early aughts. You know, is just the R word. Yeah, and he may be on this. They may have been pre presenting him as being slightly. He didn't come across as uh, that far gone, but he seemed like emotionally traumatized, sure. overly. Well, sensitive. he's not. He's not been raised by anyone. 
Right, because his, his grandmother besides is his like, senile grandma, she's is not like, capable. She's full blown dementia, seemingly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, played she by Cloris Leachman. She just keeps making sandwiches. Here is your test. This is gonna. This is what you're taking. Here. Here's your test. If a movie is not very good, as if Cloris Leachman is who they bring in to be the grandpa grandma. Yeah, <laughs> she is always some version of a crazy slash horny grandma. In yeah. everything, she's like Betty White, but can also play with dementia. She and just so had a weird resurgence in the early 2000s and i'll never understand it hey i like cloris leachman she's very funny and she does her parts well she yeah. and i think that again i don't want this to sound like this is a good movie but this is a movie that does make me laugh and so yeah. seeing her play dead and looks dead and just be like and then everyone's like, what you know she's not dead but when she did yeah. we're making some it is so funny to me and it is just ridiculous because it's so stupid it is just successfully executed stupidity let, and i appreciate that let me ask you guys garrett did you watch this alone or did you watch this with someone i watched this with my girlfriend i was gonna say this might be a relationship ender you depending know what? on she what she started off <laughs> not enjoying it and then also kind of ended up like me where she was like you know what this is just stupidity that's hubris and i was like okay I'll tell you what my my wife was out 44 minutes in so yeah, 44, but that's almost over. I, no, yeah. It yeah, was short. More than the movie. Mercifully, mercifully, it was only like 112 minutes or something yeah. like that. Thankfully, it did not over. Did you watch the director's cut? Because it was no. shorter. I watched the, the director's cut. cut shorter? Yes, I discovered that last night, and I have never heard of a director's cut that is shorter than Even the had. director was like, we got to cut some Yeah, of he was shit. like. <laughs> What's up with that? This is bad. I mean, this is you bad. know, this is bad. I, I want to see there might, I, it does feel like occasionally that should happen where like the director was like put up against the producer who was like, no, we really want this scene in the movie. And he's like, it doesn't do anything. And they're like, no, we really want it so we can use it for the trailers and stuff or whatever. Or it's a, we but, need to make it longer. We can't publish a less than an hour and a half movie. In this right. Movie that could be true too, is that they had to pad it out with, I don't know, another bit where he pisses himself. Yeah. Anyway, how about that? Anything else that we want to, you know, shout out and call out for the success of this movie? So my favorite part is, and I, it, this is going to sound like a joke, but I mean it. My favorite part is the very end because I do the, I love the image of Thurman riding his bicycle with his middle finger flying with his shit happens when you party naked t-shirt. That's yeah. just, that's hilarious. That got me. Yeah. Yes. But it had nothing to do with the movie. Just great prop. I, I don't, yeah, that's good. good that's problem. good imagery. That's good. Yeah, yeah that's, good, good. Imagery. that's a good lasting image. Yeah. And I was going to say, he I finally kicked his bully. Loved it. I, lo I, for I completely forgot. I, I, like I said, I saw this movie probably 2005. Mm -hmm. I completely forgot that Bernie Mac gets hurt really bad. I don't want to, I don't know. Can I spoil this? Is it okay? Spoil it. We'll I be think so. I think Bernie Mac gets killed, man. And I Bernie Mac gets about that. destroyed. Yeah. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, that's dark. Hey, okay. also, I want to. I the other the only other thing I have to say about this movie is I want to appreciate the rage from the queen herself, Octavia Spencer, that we have seen her this yes. Christmas season on us on so many Santas. Yes, and you can see our review of her in Spirited and the praise that she gets. And you know right. what? She gets equal praise in this movie, just leaning in to that part. And I appreciate right. that. And she gets a full star performance from me. <laughs> Oh, okay. for that. Yeah. You know, that yeah. Was, I never I was sort of uh, I had for I had read it when the titles, you know, the opening titles were happening. I was like, oh, Tiffany Spencer. Okay. <laughs> I was like, that's the second movie we've seen with her in, this December. And then I, I completely forgot. And then she showed up and I went, oh, yeah. Octavia Spencer. <laughs> Andrew, what do you think yeah. about Octavia Spencer's performance? Oscar worthy? I mean, she really conveyed the kinkery of Mr. Bad Santa himself. Yes. <laughs> I mean, our resident, she really got me with the line of, man, he cleaned my asshole out. <laughs> Award-winning performance. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, the, man. In the full 49 seconds she was in. If we keep, if we keep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 okay, good. Uh, Just making sure. We it's weird for a little bit. It's weird yeah, she too, is. Yeah, she is still not a household name by any means at this point in time. She had just finished playing Checkout Girl in Spider Man, so mm. she's still playing characters without names at this point in her career. So love to see her continue to grow 
as an actor. Oh yeah, yeah, and she's phenomenal. You know, she's she had you know she was she was great and spirited. One of the one of the highlights of that for sure. Yes, totally agree with that. Andrew, you got anything else for your movie? I don't. I, I am sorry I picked this. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You really, yeah, you only have to apologize to David. Yeah, it's great to have him back. It's great to I have found no, I've it. I've forgiven you already. It was neither offensive nor that funny to me. It was just passive. And, yeah, I don't, what's crazy is people like, a lot of people like this movie. Like, I, we're going to get into it later. But I've seen the Rotten Tomatoes and the IMDb and the Metascore. They yeah. are better than they should be. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with that. We're going to lose uh, a lot of hate, a lot of fans for this one. But let's go ahead and get into the box office success of this movie, which oh, was not it. nothing. Oh, no. It was all right. So I remember it being a cultural thing. Yes. Right? And like, I think this is one of those. So, you know, today there was, you know, movies were fairly big in the theaters and they'd be like word of mouth and they were on rental and they were on television. Right. And that was kind of like the pipeline. And Bad Santa kind of stayed in that conversation for a long time. Like, you see Bad Santa? Oh, Bad Santa. Right. Because it's really raunchy and dirty. It's a movie that your parents won't let you watch. Right. So uh, at least that's how I remember it being like a 14 year old. But Bad Santa, I mean, not the biggest opening ever. It uh, opened on the weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, November 26th, 2003. This is a crazy year, 2003. We're going to get into it in a minute. Bad Santa opened to the number five spot. Its five day total for Thanksgiving was 16.8 million. In the number one spot was The Haunted Mansion with Eddie Murphy, brought in 34 million. It also opened that week. And number two, the Cat in the Hat, starring Mike Michael My Mike Myers, that brought in thirty two point nine in its second weekend. At number three, this might be where a lot of the other this is the alternative programming for you. Elf brought in thirty million in its fourth week. At number four, Gothica brought in eighteen point four in its second week. Gothica, there's a is that Gothica back. with a K? Yeah, it is Gothica with a K. Allie I don't Bayfrey know. That seems like somebody else. Ali Berry. Okay, I was gonna say it still feels like an Angelina Jolie movie. It was a scary movie. I remember it scared me. And then for the movie would go on to make $60 million in the U.S., 16 overseas for a worldwide total of $76 million. For the year of 2003, Bad Santa would finish in the number 48 spot. This is crazy to even think about. In the number 48 spot, right, Bad Santa. In number 49, Love Actually, which you can listen to, again, our review you of can. that. So uh -huh. Bad Santa managed to just edge out Love Actually. At the top of the, top of the box office that year was... Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. Mm -hmm. Never yep. review that up. Finding Nemo at number two. There's a movie that I, I hope we get to someday, a franchise we hope we get to someday. Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl was number three. You know, we're really getting due for that. Right. Like, it might as well. Is it? Uh, there's no months to start with P. It's not. We'll figure it out. At number four, The Matrix Reloaded. And number five. We, we Bruce, covered that? Yes, we did. And then number five, Bruce Almighty. Some other movies from 2003 that we have covered is Elf. Matrix Revolutions, because those came out the same year. Did you guys do Bad Boys? You didn't do no. Bad Boys, did you? I didn't think so. Not uh, what time. else is on here? Plenty I of thought time. I saw another one that we did. You're listing oh, these wow. movies, and I am definitely remembering 2003 being a year that I watched a lot of movies. Like, it's Russo one of those that's like, yeah. oh my God, I'm flicking, like, all the switches yeah. are going, like, oh my God, that a was lot 2003. Of a lot of movies. And, old. and some weird movies, man. Some weird movies. I'll tell you, this is so, there, here's a crazy stat for you. I told you about Elf, yeah. Love Actually, and Bad Santa were all in the theater at the same time. Don't they seem like they came out at different points? It what does, but also, what a... Christmas option. Yes, now you go to the theater, and there's no Christmas option. I don't think there was but... anything new this year, except for Violent Night and Spirited. One yeah, and Spirited right was mostly streaming. Right, most of them go straight to streaming now, because That's people true. want they them really in their home where it's comfy. Love Actually well, was number nine listen. the weekend that Bad Santa come out, came out. That's that's quitters talk compared to Hallmark. That's true. Well, that's Hallmark true. They put out a lot of stuff. But yeah, it was a crazy year. It was the year of, you know, X Men Two. It was the year of Cheaper by the Dozen. It was the year of, oh. of Hulk and Too Fast, Too Furious. It's still the only Fast and Furious I've seen. A uh, soft spot for Cheaper by the Dozen. It was uh, the year of Scary Movie Three. Daredevil. I think I said last the last two weeks. I gave you like a little stat. Here's a little stat. In two thousand three. 29 films made more than $100 million in the domestic box office. So we talked about how in like 1992, it was like six. Or mm -hmm. 1998, it was like three. We were getting to the point where movie theater, and that's, you know, due to a lot of things, increase in theater numbers. There some of, most of these theaters were in, or, you know, most of these movies were in more theaters than they had in 1992. Mm -hmm. so anyway. Blockbusters are taking off. 
that's that's it for the box office stats. We can move on to Letterbox game. Yeah, all right. Well, Letterboxd is where we go to figure out what the, you know, general gist of this movie's score is. So does anyone want to throw out a guess while I pull up some popular Letterboxd reviews? I want to throw in 2.9. 2.9, okay. That's a good guess. That's a good guess. That's right about where I wanted to be. Okay. I will go- say... Yeah, I go up or down. I don't know, man. I gotta <laughs> say 3.1. Okay. I think the Letterbox community likes it. I do. That's what I'm worried about. I think it's gonna be a little higher than you think, and I think it's gonna be... I'm struggling because I want to say three and a half, but I think I'm going to go with it. Uh, and I think I'm going to go a little higher and do a three, six, three, six. Okay. Okay. Then, that, then I'm going to slice some slice and dice and pick a 3.3. 3. Okay. Cause okay. I also think it's, I think it's in the threes. This is, this review is going to make David furious. Four and a half stars. Oh, hands man. down, the funniest Christmas movie ever made. No. To me, watching this is like watching or seeing an old friend after so many years to pick up right where you left off and continue laughing. No. Oh, oh man. I'm going to be angry on David's behalf. We need to send help to that person. We need, that's a red flag. <laughs> old, that's a red flag right there. That's a big old Santa's bag of bullshit. Right there, if I ever heard it. Bad Santa may be vile, crass, and misanthropic, Maybe. but thanks to Glenn Ficarra and John Requa's sharp script, Terry Zweigoff's Norris direction, and fantastic performances from a superb cast, it has genuine wit and real edge to it, as well as a surprising <laughs> amount of heart that's twisted yet very much organic. It's one of my favorite Christmas films of all time. Okay. from the crowd. Baffling. 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 I'm just basking. I'm basking right now because I'm very no. excited. I'm very excited. We'll leave it at those two and reveal that the winner of this particular round of the Letterbox game is going to be a tiebreaker. Uh-oh. Oh, not a direct hit is what that we've means. Got a, we've got a 3.2, which means I believe mm. it's between me and yeah. David. Okay. Oh darn! I guess I'm out on this one. <laughs> Let's see. We need a tiebreaker. I can't. I, we can't do the uh, the other thing scores because I looked them up already. I had to know. Oh, yeah. yeah. What if we did? Well, um, I'm looking up the Ernest Save Christmas Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, okay. That'll work. That'll work. I will, cause that. Yeah. I don't even. Okay. What did you say it was, Josh? It's a three point two. It's a three point two. That's about in line with the other sites. The other sites are like. I think on Letterbox or I think on Hot Rotten Tomatoes, Bad Santa is like a 70 and a 72. 107 Letterbox users have named this one of their top four movies. FBI. FBI to this house. <laughs> right Calling now. the police. Okay, boys, I got it pulled up. I have the Rotten Tomato score for the last movie we reviewed. Well, we reviewed. You can go listen to that on So Many Santas. It's Ernest Saves Christmas. What do you think the Rotten Tomatoes score is for Ernest Saves Christmas? Christmas. You know, this feels almost <laughs> impossible to me. But then narrow down. I genuinely can't decide if I even think it's fresh or rotten. I don't know. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna lean on the I'm gonna lean barely on the fresh side and say 67%. I want to be wrong, I think. <laughs> I'm going to I don't need this win. I'm gonna say it's a 75. I don't need this win. A 75. Okay, so jo- 75 from David. Josh, you said 60 what? Seven, 67. 67. It is a surprising. Listen. No. Listen. No. It is 36%. Okay. Josh is taking the lead. Oh, or Ty, he is taking the win. In this wow. Well, I'm 36%. Glad. That hurt. That was terrifying. That was really scary. It feels like less of a win since David told me he doesn't need it, but I'll take it nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, all right. With that, where, where are we? Where are we on our personal star ratings for Bad Santa? I'm going to go first two. to get it out of the way. Go first. Get, get, get it out of the way. Two, two and oh, a half. Yeah. I'll give it oh. two and a half. Wow. Well, that's higher than I expected, honestly. So listen, we talked about in earnest, I have a specific spot for movies like this, right? Is yes. 1.5 that is bad but entertaining. But if you recall, 
I gave Octavia Spencer a full star in this review. And then in honor of John Ritter, I'm going to give it another half star. And this movie comes out for me, only me, and I understand, but it gets a three star. Wow, that's high praise. It's a two for me. It's a solid number two. And uh, I could have gone lower, I think, but a lot of people do like this. So I kind of feel like I feel peer pressured into <laughs> higher review. It, I'll tell you what, it left a mark. Okay. Skid mark. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be, a, I'm going to go, I'm going to match David and say it's a two for me as well, which brings us to a 2.37 average. Yeah, wait, hold on, hold on. Uh huh. I'm going to downgrade. My oh my goodness. Two point two and a half to a two. Okay. That's going to make our average down very slightly, but to 2.25. Yeah. Sorry, Billy Bob. It's not that I hate it. It's just that it exists. Right. It, right. it is honestly at this stage of my life, it did not very much. It didn't do much for me. You no, know? I get that. This came out of the stage whenever I watched yeah. it at that time, at the same time as you, David. But my reaction was, "This movie's hilarious." Rather right. Than well, like, and you, know. you know, and some, and some movies in that time period it had that effect. I don't know. Maybe it was the performer. Maybe it was something else about that movie. You know, I loved you know uh, Road Trip when I was a kid. Probably doesn't sure. hold up at all now. But you know, uh, yeah. It I'm always scared to rewatch some of those old favorites from my early teenage years when you just watch crap. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's the weird I, thing I about R rated movies back then is they always seemed like they were targeted to 14 year old boys. They were. Even though they Seems technically like it. they couldn't see them. But they made them want to so bad. Right. Yeah. And which made their parents take them. All right. I very briefly tried to scan through our previous episodes real quick. And I think this is the raunchiest movie we've covered. And, we've co and I mean that strictly in terms of raunch, right? Because we've done horror movies with plenty of gore and nasty and scariness. But as a raunchy comedy, I think this is the top of the pile for us. Well, we did Twas the Night. or what night was called. Night, night Before. Night before. I don't that think that one. Had, it actually had male nudity in it, so. It did. You are right. Why are the Christmas movies the only raunch we have? You are right. Because they're fun. <laughs> they can be fun. I think maybe that's what it is watching it now is I can see it and go, I mean, yeah, but I've seen a lot of better raunchy Christmas movies. <laughs> but at the time, you hadn't. So if that was your thing, that's the best you could get. All right. Well, that, honestly, that wraps up so many Santas, actually. Yeah. Thump, thump, We're done. Thump, thump, We're done thump, with thump, Christmas. Thump. I think it's been a pretty fun one this year. I think I we've had a so. wide range. Well done, boys. Well yes. done. Great variety in terms of type of movie and in terms of quality. How would you, how would you rate them? Like rank them. Be really? Oh. Yeah. Bad Santa. Ernest. Home Alone 2? Oh, and sorry. then Ernest? No. no, I would say for me, it's spirited Bad Santa, Home Alone 2, Ernest. Interesting. I Home would Alone flip too spirited. It's bad Santa Ernest. I'll go. I'll flop Josh's and I'll just say spirited yeah, at the top, and then Home Alone two, and then a bad Santa Ernest. It's yeah. a, in it to me. It's like Ernest is just the clean version of this movie. That's okay. what. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. This is just R rated <laughs> Ernest. Yeah, well, and, that's, right. and for me, the way that I feel about Home Alone 2 is that it is too long and it is the same exact movie in the second half. And I enjoyed the first half, but then you lost me because he gave me the same thing. So at least Bad Santa is different. I'd rather watch Home Alone. Yeah, we had, a diver we had a pretty diverse selection of films this year. Yeah, we surely did. All, All right. right. Well, that's it for so many Santas for this year. Can't wait for so many Santas 2023. But we have to go into hibernation for a little bit to do that. However, right. be sure to keep checking your podcast app for our probably season finale next week, which was going to be our annual year-end wrap-up. David's been working on a So Many Sequels Wrapped mm. project we're excited to hear about. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about our favorite movies of the year, biggest disappointments, all that fun stuff next week. So look for that. Follow us online if you don't already. So many sequels.com. You can find links to our socials there. We'll see you next time. Have a happy new year.